some core workout. Oh, oh, man. I'm here to talk to you about the core of patent law. Hello, my name is J.D. Hoovener, registered USPTO patent attorney, and I'm the managing partner here at CEO at Bold Patents Law Firm. Today, I want to dive deep in helping you better understand patent claim drafting and the six core principles you need to know. And before we get started, I want you to know there are timestamps right down below you can fast forward to a specific subject matter that you're looking for. But if you have time, I highly encourage that you watch the whole video. Now this is also recorded in our blog article. BoldIP.com forward slash blog have written a full detailed 3,000 plus word article that goes into this in much more detail if you want to supplement this video. Let's go through the six core principles of patent claim drafting. Part one, understanding patent law and USPTO rules on patent claims. So the first rule about patent claims is that for some reason the law is structured such that the claims themselves, they're not up front. Go to Google Patents and you search on the most recent patent that's been issued, it's not on the first page. You've got to scroll way at the bottom of the specification to find the numbered set of claims typically 1 through 20. And again, they're numbered. You'll see that. It starts out with the words, I claim or we claim. This is part of the rule. Now, as you break down each claim, let's say claim one, which is usually in what's called an independent claim. It has to be one sentence. That's just a rule. Each claim must be only one sentence long. The reason for that is that the patent office wants to keep it limited. So you're not going on and on talking about what you've invented. You've got to be somewhat concise. The true term is, You've got to particularly claim your distinct invention. Now, this is going to make it much more difficult to read. If you've ever read run-on sentences, that's what claims are, okay? Semicolons, colons, comma breaks, ands. And what's interesting is that they can go on with multiple breaks in almost a non-comprehensible way, where there's line breaks, several paragraphs, all made up into one sentence. So let's talk about how the format of the claims goes and the different words that you're going to see when you start to read the claims. The formatting is important. There has to be, of course, this, this title section, which is we claim or I claim. And then you can jump into what's called the preamble. Right? The preamble sets up the claim and it uses the terms comprising or including. So you'll say the foam football for play sports comprising. Okay, the foam play sport football comprising. So they're going to be describing, as you know, a football. But that's just the preamble. And the word comprising tells you, okay, well, it's going to be including these things. But comprising is an interesting word that it's actually going to be able to include other things later. It says, well, it's at least going to be including the following elements. So they're going to probably describe how the structure, right, what that football looks like the angles, the specific angles of incidence, the, the drag, maybe some little arrows they've got on the football. I'm picturing one of these Nerf balls, right? And they're going to go through all the different elements of how that football is shaped and what the functional benefits are for it. Now you can also use different terms that might limit you. You can say including. So that usually is a closed term. It's going to limit you in terms of what sort of elements you're going to put down there. The last section about formatting the claims is you must make sure you have what's called an antecedent basis. An antecedent basis means you must always talk about words that you've introduced before. So if I'm talking about this foam football and I later start talking about rubber, specifically rubber or nylon plastic, if I haven't talked about that before in the structure, that's going to be an antecedent basis issue and the examiner is going to reject it for that reason. Part three, drafting an apparatus claim. So much like any other claim, apparatuses are probably the easiest to kind of get your arms around. I mean, literally, they're devices. You can put your fingers and hands on them. So similar structure where you've got a preamble, elements. The key for apparatuses is that you have support in the specification. The specification is a fancy term for the written description of your invention. The spec, for short, is going to cover lots of different structure, ways that your, for our example, this foam football is constructed. Right? If you cut it in half, what is it made of? Is there a common core? What kind of adhesives would you use with the different plastic liners or the, the angle and, the, and the, the overall feathers on it? Now, 
this support in the spec must be there if you're going to be claiming it. So let's say in the dependent claim you're talking about a dorsal fin on this football. Well, if you don't talk about how a fin is attached to the football in the spec, you're in big trouble. All right, so let's talk about process claims. Process claims are a different type of invention, right? This is the fourth category. Typical for software or for chemical processes, the outcome of it is supposed to be beneficial, right? You're supposed to be providing that functionality. And how do you do that? By walking them through verbiage. You're going to, instead of showing them structure and elements, you're going to be using verbs, creating, crafting, articulating, storing. Every single one of those elements is going to help you roll up and create a process. What's interesting is you have the control over whether you want to make them required to be in a sequence or if they can change the order. If you use words like then or before or after, now you're locking yourself into a specific order of operations. In order to prove that someone else is infringing that claim, you have to show that they're not only performing all of those steps, but they're doing them in that order. It makes it more challenging and it limits your scope of rights. So it's a careful point to make. Compositions of matter claims. These are elements much like pharmaceuticals, materials like metals, where you're putting multiple elements together to form one molecular structure. So compositions of matter claims do tend to be uh, more intricate in terms of their percentages. They're going to mention percentage by weight. They're going to talk about the proportion of materials compared to the other substrate. They'll talk instead of about structure and not really about the order of operations, but what is the matter composed of, right? How is it structured? Now, in addition to this, I should also mention that there are usually more than one independent claim set. And so it is possible, for example, in our apparatus claim for the football, to talk about the structure apparatus claim in independent claims one and have a separate independent claim 10 that goes into the method of construction. All right, so both of these can be put together in the same claim set. Last but not least are design patent claims. Totally different from utility patent. The claim is only one. There's only one claim and what it says, it's typically standard language. It says the ornamental drawing as shown below. That's it. The claim itself is actually the drawing. It's the black letter drawing outline of whatever you're actually claiming. And so it's all about the drawings when it comes to a design patent. I'm going to quickly summarize part one. Make sure you understand the laws and rules of how to structure the claim, where to put it in the spec, how long to make it, and to make sure you keep it one sentence long. Formatting the claims and understanding the difference between the preamble and the type of wording you're using, whether it's open or closed, and antecedent basis is being addressed. When you're drafting apparatus claims, you've got to make sure you've got support in the specification. Process claims, you've got to make sure you're using the right verbiage, walking through active claiming, and deciding whether you're going to be narrow in scope and showing them the precise order of operations or letting those be, change hands. Composition of matter claims, discussing the right proportions of material, and last but not least, design patent claims focusing on the drawing. I want to also make sure you know that you can get your free copy of Bold Ideas, the Inventor's Guide to Patents, today. Go to boldip.com forward slash free to get your free PDF download.